It is good to be back for sure. Family had a really good feast experience. Hope all of you did as well, wherever you were at. Looking forward to hearing everyone's stories at the potluck. Well, the Church of God's traditional practice of asking a blessing over the present and future lives of young children, based on Christ's example, is, as has already been referred to and as we sang in the songs, alluding to it, a really wonderful and meaningful ceremony. It gives us an opportunity to focus on the hope and promise of life that we tend to think of with greater clarity in the context of youth, when life is newer and filled with opportunity. So today, in preparation for that ceremony, I'd like to focus on a thought that is filled with spiritual hope and promise for all of us, regardless of our age. In Luke 18, 16, we find it recorded that Jesus said, prior to, prior to the blessing that's referred to you, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. So in the time that we have remaining, let's consider the current role and character of Jesus Christ by the author of Hebrews and set the context for who it is that provides this blessing, along with the many other blessings that God provides in our lives. In the middle of the letter to the Hebrews, we find the author going to great lengths to show that the role and office filled by the Messiah was superior to the Levitical priesthood and the system of worship that those priests administered, which during the time of the Old Covenant pointed forward to the Messiah's coming. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews 7, and we'll start in verse 22, and we're breaking into a thought here where the author is again describing the superiority of the Messiah to the Levitical priests. Hebrews 7, verse 22. By so much more, Jesus has become a surety, or guarantee, as the margin also notes, of a better covenant. Also, there were many priests, because they were by death from continuing. But he, he, Jesus, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. An unchangeable priesthood. In this passage, the author contrasts the physical limitations of former high priests specifically with the unlimited and eternal capability of the one who replaced them. As it states, all who merely filled the physical role were prevented by death from continuing. The high priests administering worship under the old covenant invariably met with this reality. The Nelson Study Bible notes that the first century historian Josephus estimated 80 different high priests between Aaron and the fall of the temple in AD 70. Summarizing the difference between those priests and Christ that the author of Hebrews is highlighting, the Expositor's Bible Commentary says, Death was inevitable for the Aaronic priests, and it meant the end of their service in the high priesthood. But with Christ it is different. He remains forever, and thus his priesthood never has to be continued by another. He lives through eternity, and his priesthood lives with him. It is this unending durability of the priesthood carried out by Jesus that is referred to with this wonderful word in verse 24, unchangeable, unchangeable. That is the only biblical occurrence of this Greek word, aparabatos. It's in this verse. Multiple Bible resources note that it could be rendered as inviolable or unalterable, which would have the implication of a role that is permanently secure. William Barclay notes that this word was also used in reference to legal matters and described something that was non-transferable, cannot be transferred to someone else. So how does that relate to the blessing that was asked for many of us as children and that we continue to ask for the new children that God blesses us with? 
And beyond that, how does it relate to our individual and ongoing relationships with God, whether we were blessed in this way as children or not? Based on what we've reviewed, one of the most important and comforting aspects of our with God are the guidance and mediation of a high priest who will always, who will always be in that role. Verse 25 in Hebrews 7 says, Therefore, therefore he, Jesus, and it's referring to because of this unchangeable priesthood, therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. In this life, we are all subject to the inherently transient nature of our existence not be avoided. As the late 1800s author James Lindell Basford wrote, life is a long road on a short journey. And the older we get, the more of that we see. A long road on a short journey. Our parents, our family members, our spouses and friends will pass away. Your pastor, your boss, your most trusted spiritual mentor will someday not be in those roles. And we, not to be left out, will someday not be in the roles that we fill now as humans either. But the high priest who gave his own life to guarantee the provisions of a covenant that offers the same eternal life that he has to us and our children will still be in that role. In the time then that we have remaining, let's very briefly review three elements of our unchangeable high priest character that will bless both our lives and the lives of the children that we commit to his care. The first element of his character is his unchangeable grace. His unchangeable grace. Grace is both an undeserved pardon and favor that confers a status or treatment that has not been earned and the giving of physical and spiritual gifts that enable us to transform away from and beyond the things that we have been pardoned from. We are incredibly blessed that the grace extended by our high priest does not change or go away. In our modern world of pervasive advertising and marketing, we all endure a non-stop barrage of special, limited one-time offers. Hurry, don't wait, time is running out. If you don't act now, the sale or discount, or bonus or opportunity, whatever it is that's offered, will be gone and it will be too late for you to gain the benefits. The grace of God is no marketing ploy. We will all be given every opportunity that our compassionate, merciful high priest knows that we need to accept both the pardon and the gifts that it offers. And while we're in that process, our high priest's offer will not expire. The second element of his character is his unchangeable love. His unchangeable love. Love is a combination of thoughts and actions that are primarily outward and outgoing in nature and brings benefits to those who receive the outcomes of those thoughts and actions. We are incredibly blessed that the love continually demonstrated by our high priest does not change or go away. In a world that is constantly confused with perception versus reality, Temporary feelings and emotions that vary widely based on circumstances are often mistaken both for the presence and for the absence of genuine love. And we all struggle with the reality that giving and receiving true godly love often includes things that are very difficult to accept. But the love of God is not based on circumstantial factors that change. Thankfully, it is based on a much more solid foundation, which is the third element of his character, his unchangeable faithfulness, his unchangeable faithfulness. Faithfulness, like love, 
is listed in Galatians 5.22 as one of the fruits of God's spirit. The term faithfulness in that verse is translated from a Greek word that can also be translated as fidelity, a permanent endurance of commitment, commitment. William Barclay points out that in secular Greek, this word was used to describe trustworthiness, which is the characteristic of people who are reliable. During these temporary lives within a world that is impermanent by design and within an environment of constant physical, emotional, and spiritual instability resulting from Satan's influence and our own human nature, we yearn for things that are truly constant and steadfast to anchor our lives to. The faithfulness of God is anchored in our high priest's commitment to give us, the children that God the Father created through him, the ability to become full members of the God family and to be like them, having the perfected character and eternal life that they have. That is a promise faithfulness that they give to us. So to summarize, let's notice the concluding statement in the letter to the Hebrews on this topic. Hebrews 7, verse 28. The author writes, For the law appoints as high priests men who have weakness. But the word of the oath, which was referred to earlier in the chapter from Psalms 110, but the word of the oath which came after the law appoints the son who has been perfected forever. Much as the law appointed weakness in the system of the Levitical priesthood, we participate in the process of salvation as men, women, and children who have weaknesses as well. Thankfully, the outcome of that process of salvation isn't entirely dependent on our weaknesses or on our strengths. Much rather, it depends on our relationship with our Savior and High Priest who has an unchangeable role, an unchangeable character. So as we conduct this meaningful ceremony asking God to bless and be present in the lives of the little ones among us, let's be grateful for the presence of the permanently secure high priest who offered this blessing during his human life and mediates it now. All of our lives are great by his unchangeable grace and love and faithfulness.